Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about pituitary adenoma. The pituitary gland is referred to as the master gland because it controls and coordinates the body's hormonal functions. It does so through the several hormones, including growth hormones for growth and development, LH, FSH, and prolactin for sexual and reproductive functions. Thyroid stimulating hormones for metabolism, adrenocorticotropic hormones for the stress response, and vasopressin for maintaining water and electrolyte balance. Overall, the gland is essential for health and quality of life. Anatomically, the pituitary gland sits in a small body, bony depressions of the skull base called cella turcica. Below that is a midline skull base called the clivus and in front of the gland is the splenoid air sinus. Coursing along the sides of the pituitary glands are the paired carotid arteries, which run in the cavernous sinus. The pituitary gland is connected to the air of the brain called the hypothalamus through the pituitary stack. Directly above the gland, or the crossing of the visual fibers coming from the optic nerves called the optic chiasm. Also in close proximity to the pituitary gland, or the frontal lobes, temporal lobes, and the brain systems, pituitary adenomas are by far the most common tumors associated with the pituitary gland. They are categorized by size as well as the hormonal status. On the left is shown as a microadenoma, and on the right, macroadenoma. The pituitary gland is shaded in green and adenoma in yellow. Note that more compressions of the normal gland from the large macroadenoma. Endocrine inactive tumors produce no hormones, while endocrine active tumors produce hormones including those associated with acromegaly, Cushing's disease, prolactin, and thyroid stimulating hormones. Macroadenomas may produce symptoms of mass effect from pressures on surrounding structures. This may include pituitary gland failure, which can lead to fatigue, weight gain, depressions, decreased libido, infertility, and loss, loss of menses, as well as visual loss from pressure on the optic chiasm and optic nerves, headaches which are often frontal, temporal, or midline in location, and pituitary apoplexy from the tumor bleeding. Endocrine active pituitary adenomas produce symptoms of hormonal excess. In acromegaly, this may include altered facial appearance, enlargement of hands and feet, sleep apnea, carpal tunnel syndrome, hypertension, diabetes, and colon polyps. For patients with Cushing's disease, symptoms can include weight gain, facial rounding, stretch marks, hypertensions, diabetes, and osteoporosis. Prolactinomas in women typically lead to loss of menses, breast milk discharge, weight gain, and loss of libido. And in men, they may lead to loss of libido, impotence, and weight gain. Symptoms of mass effect may also occur in patients with endocrine active tumors, particularly those with acromegaly and prolactinomas. Other grossers can occur around the pituitary gland include Ratkate's cleft cysts, which are often with the gland and do not always warrant treatment, but on occasion can lead to headaches, visual loss, and pituitary failure. Craniopharyngiomas, which are benign cystic and solid tumors can arise along the pituitary stack and can lead to similar symptoms. They typically need surgical treatment. Meningiomas are generally benign tumors that are often present with visual loss in this area. And finally, clival chordomas arising from the skull base can often result in the double vision. Here are MRIs of common paracellular tumors. The first images of the pituitary adenoma with the tumor shown in yellow in the gland in green. Ratke's cleft cyst is shown with the gland pushed around the internal cyst. A large craniopharyngioma shown sitting above the pituitary gland and below the hypothalamus. A tubercle meningioma sitting atop the pituitary gland and causing visual loss. And finally, the clival chordoma sitting behind and below the pituitary gland arising from the clival skull base. The initial diagnostic workup for the patient with pituitary adenoma or related tumor typically involves pituitary hormonal testing. 
visual field and acuity assessment, as well as imaging with MRIs and sometimes CT scan. Primary treatment for most symptomatic pituitary adenomas and related tumors involves adenosal endoscopic surgery and in some radiosurgery or radiotherapy, as well as the medical therapies and hormonal replacement. Primary treatment for most pituitary adenomas is endonasal endoscopic surgery, with the exceptions of being prolactinomas, which are typically first treated with cabergolin symptomatic wrap. These are typically approached with endonasal endoscopic surgery, as well as craniopharyngiomas. Although in some instances, an eyebrow craniotomy may be appropriate. Persola meningiomas can be approached by endonasal or eyebrow or traditional root, and clival cordomas are typically treated to an endonasal into endoscopic approach. This technique has been greatly enhanced over the last decades by improvements and instrumentations on high definition endoscopy. It is now the preferred method for the removal of the great majority of pituitary and related skull based tumors.